Hi guys, it is uh, Lisa here or the Diamond Stitcher as I go by on YouTube and Instagram. Hello, good morning or good afternoon, whatever time it is you are watching this video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you are new to my channel, first off, welcome. I'm happy you found me. I hope you would consider subscribing and sticking around for all things diamond painting. And if you are returning, thank you so much for your continued support. I am sitting down on a Wednesday afternoon. We are snowed in here in my part of Canada and the snow is still coming down. We've got over 30 centimeters. It's not usual for us at all uh, where I'm from. So um, it's been quite funny. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pop up a picture of Zoe, my dog, in her little snow suit. Oh my gosh, you guys. So she has a fleece under jacket and then a covering on top. And then she has to wear her, those little winter boots. Otherwise, she will not move in the snow. Now, granted, the snow is too tall for her right now. It literally comes over her. But the apartment we live in, they take care of the snow plowing. And they um, use like a snowblower machine, I guess it's called. And they make a little uh, spot in the grass for all the small dogs to have a spot to pee. So... I did have to bundle her and me up and we went out and braved the snow uh, for a quick bathroom break for her and now we are back warming up and before I sit down to diamond paint I thought I would sit down and film this short video now I'm just noticing cat hair attached to my placer don't mind that what I'm going to show you today is how to make your pen tips fit into your diamond painting pen. Now there can be two issues with pen tips and fitting into pens. One is that they could be too loose and the other is that they could be too small and they won't fit in. So if one is too loose and I don't think this is loose. Yeah okay so this one is loose. So this is Diamond Art Club's I don't know it's a six or an eight placer and this pen I should say wasn't it beautiful. This one is from Donna Bass and I pulled out one of her pens because she actually inspired this video. She uh, gave a tip the other week on how to make your pen holes bigger. And I wanted to share that with all of you, but also give her credit. So this is an amazing pen she's turned. It's a flower hybrid blank. And she put some nice uh, crystals in the middle there. Donna Bass is a USA small shop. I can't remember what state they're in, but uh, it's a husband and wife business. She makes the most beautiful pens with all sorts of blanks. And she's known to do these crystal inclusions. She also does banding, uh, like um, not banding, inlays, like glitter or opal inlays. I have another pen with some opal. And yeah, her pens are amazing. I've had quite a few over the years and I've since passed some on to others just to experience her products because they are amazing. So yeah, I don't know where I was before I said that. But um, here we have a uh, six or eight placer from Diamond Art Club. These are their new thin metal tips. Oh my gosh, the cat hair that I absolutely love. So the opening is a little bit thin, thinner than traditional pens. Don't mind the putty in there that needs changing. On the ends, and I don't know if it's going to be easy to see through the camera. I can't tell if it's blurry or not, but um, there's ridges on these tips. I think the purpose of these ridges is to make it fit snug in a pen, but it doesn't really do that. So as you saw, when I went to put it in here, it's very easily in and out, in and out. Very simple tip for this. This is what I do all of the time. I do not mess around with glue. All I use is washi tape. And what I do is I will tear off a strip about that long. And then I take this. You can use scissors or I just very carefully tear it. But I'm going to tear it in half so it's thinner. Again, you can use small craft scissors, which is why I brought them here. But uh, I just, I've done it quite a few times. So I just tear it like that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Then what you do is take the washi tape and you're going to wrap it around this part of the pen tip. So I'm going to flip it around so the flat side faces up there. Now it can vary how many times you need to wrap this around the pen tip. It really depends on how loose your tip is. Generally, I find going around one and a half times to two times is enough. Now you can always add more or take some off if it's too much. So this is about one and a half. So once I wrapped it around there, I just made sure it was stuck on nicely. And then we're going to try it in the um, pen hole here. So let's see what happens. It's like a magic trick. So that fit nicely. It's probably a little snug for my liking because the one thing I don't want to do is shove it in too hard and risk cracking that resin. 
that would not be fun at all. So I'm probably going to take a little bit off. So I just tore a little bit off. And let's see if that fits a little bit easier. It does. So I'm happy with that. So that fit nice enough that I'm not afraid that it's going to put pressure on the resin and crack it. And enough that it's not going anywhere, no matter how hard I shake this pen. That tip is in there. It's not wobbling side to side at all. If I push it, it's perfect. And you can see that it's right flush against the pen there, the um, outside ridge. There, we solved one problem. Now let me move these little pieces of tape over, sticking to my arm. I hope everybody is doing well. Let me know how you're doing. Are you guys in a snowstorm? Wherever you are from, I think we're, everybody's getting snow. Again, this is the most snow we've ever gotten. Uh, even, yeah, even last year it wasn't this much. There's a white car parked outside of my building on the street, and it is pretty much almost buried in snow. It just needs a few more inches, and it would be completely covered. So, yeah, we got a lot of snow. Okay, so now... What I found, what a lot of people are finding, these are the single placer from Diamond Art Club. I do like it because I do feel like the opening is a little bit smaller in diameter than other metal tip placers that I've used. I find because it is smaller, I can see more of the diamond when I'm going to put it down on my canvas so I can get it a little bit straighter and in the right spot. So it's a little bit more precise. So I really like these, but I've been bummed because I haven't been able to use them because they don't fit in majority of my pens. And the reason is, again, this one they created with, um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, yeah, you can kind of see those ridges there. So they've created this stair step one, but the top most ridge is too big for majority of pen tips. So pen turners use a certain drill bit here. I don't know what size it is, but they use something to create these holes and it's somewhat universal, I think. You know, it can vary from shop to shop, but generally, um, I don't usually have trouble with tips. The only problem I have is that they're too loose and I need to add some washi tape, which is no big deal. I should say, if you have a loose tip and you don't like this washi tape method, I do hear people use a hot glue gun, a little dab of glue in there, and it's good. The nice thing about that is you can remove it down the road if you want to, but I just prefer the washi tape because it's much easier to remove than, you know, unsticking glue. Uh, I've heard some people use super glue, but remember, you're never going to be able to get that pen tip out. And I know for me, I like swapping my pen tips all the time. I choose different pens depending on my mood, the day, the painting, and then my placers too depend how much color blocking and how much confetti is in a kit. Uh, so for this pen tip, we are going to put it in here. Now, as you can see, I think you can see... I'm filming in the living room, so not my usual setup, but it doesn't go in. It stops um, probably a couple millimeters above that ridge, so it stops right there because it's just, it's the hole is too small. So I learned this trick. Now, this might, might make some of you gasp, but it does work. I've tried it uh, before. I totally forgot about this method. Uh, but what you need is an exacto like this, a blade that's kind of shaped like this, and it needs to be relatively new or very, very sharp. And uh, we're going to use that to cut away a little bit of the resin around the opening so that we can get our tip in. Now, when I when you do it, you want to kind of angle the um, exacto knife down a bit. You don't want you know, just the very topmost layer, I kind of want to get it down a little bit, if that makes any sense at all. So um, I, I kind of angle it quite a bit, if you can see, kind of like that. And then what you're going to do, you got to be careful because you're working with a sharp blade, but you very carefully, and I'm trying to make sure I'm in camera. There we go. So um, very carefully, you're going to start shaving off part of this resin. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on there, but I am creating a shaving. I'm going to take that piece off. I don't know if you can see it on my skin. You see that? Yeah. So I created that little shaving. So we're just very carefully and in a very small amount, just shaving around this opening. And we're going to go around once. And then we're going to test our tip, see if that made a difference, if we need to do it more. Now, we might run into the issue where we take too much off and it's loose. Again, washi tape will fix that. It's better that it's too loose than it doesn't fit. So it doesn't quite go in still. So then we do it again. 
And what I like to do this time is kind of aim it a little bit down even more. And we are just going to very carefully, and as you can see my thumb and the blade, you have to be very careful. If you are somebody who is, doesn't have a steady hand or isn't good at this kind of thing, maybe wear some safety gloves. I would hate somebody to cut themselves, but i um, just going to go around here very carefully. Now this is not going to damage the pen at all. You remember that some pens are made with different materials. You might have a wood-based pen, a resin pen. Uh, this pen has some flower inclusions, so we might get into some of those. So just be mindful of that. Not quite. It's going to still come out. So what it's probably going to end up happening is we're going to do it again, and then I'm going to need to add a little bit of washi tape. But I'm just looking here. What I want to do, and it's hard to... Do it while filming it. I hope I'm staying in frame. But I'm trying to get a little bit deeper into it rather than just the very top. As you can see, all these shavings on the table, right? So we are chipping away, and it's better to go slowly than uh, do too much at once. I want to shave a little bit more off this side. Again, I'm no expert at this. I have done it a couple of times, so I kind of know what I like. And um, again, it's just trial and error. I think we should be good now. Oh, can we go down a little more? Do I want to go down a little more? No. So what I'm going to try now is I'm actually going to put get this washi tape I crumple that back and I'm just going to put a little bit around and see if it just helps um, prevent a wobble sorry I'm just going to blow this and I cut that out because it makes a whistling sound so I'm going to just kind of do this around once and I found some pen tips wrapping it once is still too much it only needs like on half a side, so it really just depends on your pen and your tips. But let's see. Do I like that? I think, you know what, I think it needs a little more. So I'm just using the natural light at the window. But it doesn't need more up top, it needs more kind of inside. So now what I'm kind of doing, and it's going to be probably hard to see this, is I'm going kind of almost up and down directly just to get some of the inside girth shaved off. There we go. Happy with that. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more washi tape to make it secure. Just so that it doesn't wobble, right? It's not an exact science fitting these. So now see, I've added too much. It doesn't like it. So I'm going to take some of that off. And just use half of it. Where did it stop? Right there. I have been busy all morning actually making my Valentine's cover minders. I should show you guys. I'm going to grab them after this to show you. So look at that. It fits. It's not wobbling at all. I can try to make it wobble. It's not. It's got that washi tape around there. I can shake it. It's not going to come out. And I'm going to be diamond painting very happily. <laughs> this pen is ready to go. So I hope that that was easy to follow and easy to understand. Again, what you need is a sharp X-Acto knife that kind of looks like this. Um, Donna Bass did use a similar one as well. I, I happen to have this one in my drawer, but I did, I think at one point, just buy it off Amazon. I actually used this to cut the plastic off my canvas until one day I accidentally cut through my canvas and then I used it no more. Uh, but now I'm happy I have it so that 
If I have a pen that doesn't quite fit these Diamond Art Club tips, I can very easily make them fit because I, I really do like these Diamond Art Club tips. Uh, they work very well. I love that the opening is thinner. It just grabs the diamonds easier. It makes placing them easier and a dream to work on. So super happy that I have a fully functional pen again. Now let me clear off these shavings and grab my Valentine's Minder so I can give you guys a sneak peek. I know not all of you are over in my Facebook group. That's where I gave a sneak peek earlier today. So I will be right back. Okay, guys, here is a big reveal. <laughs> I was busy this morning. I made all of these today. I did six earlier on and then I think six later. So uh, let me show you. I started doing these kind of cover minders last Christmas. I decided to see about making. I've been playing around with a few different uh, ideas. I wanted some other craft that I could do when I wasn't able to diamond paint. Maybe my arms were too sore, you know, or I just didn't feel like it, but I wanted to do something crafty. So I thought about these cover minders and with the Christmas ones, I felt like I perfected it. So I did go ahead and make a bunch of Christmas ones and uh, sell those. They are all gone right now. I will be making more Christmas ones. I have tons of supplies left, but we are heading into February soon. And I've had lots of requests for Valentine's cover minders. So here we are. Let me show you some of these guys. Let's see if I can get it kind of up close. This one has a calendar with a date on it and a heart with love. I add some special diamonds around them, special jewels, um, clay slices, any fun things I can find. A lot of the, the little pieces or bits and bobs that I add to these, I, I find on small shops on Etsy that are in Canada, and I can support them that way. And then I do add a layer of resin on it so that it looks nice finished. So it just has a very small layer of resin that I dry and cure, and that means that none of these little bits and bobs are ever going to fall off. What I will do then is I will glue a magnet on the back and they can be used as cover minders. So what a cover minder is, I was going to, there is a diamond painting beside me, but I can't show you that yet. Um, it's a secret. But uh, cover minders, they used to hold the plastic back on your diamond painting. You can also use it to secure release papers. That's what I do if I'm not quite finished a section and I want to pack up for the day. I just stick one of these on my uh, release paper covering my painting and it stays, which is nice. Uh, you can also pop these on the fridge for some fridge magnets as well. They come with two magnets, so one is glued on and the other is free. The free magnet, of course, goes under your canvas and then this little guy will go on top. So there is one. This one was very popular in my Facebook sneak peek. I do have a few more of these cap ones, so I might make a few more of these because I think I want to keep one of them. I think that turned out really nice. And we have this one. This one I made with a friend in mind whose anniversary is Valentine's Day as well. Now, when am I going to drop these? I don't know yet. Now, I do have an Etsy storefront. It is now called the Diamond Stitcher, just to make it easier to remember. And um, that's where I did the Christmas drops. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go through Etsy again or if I'm just going to do it through the Facebook group. So then I can save in all the fees that Etsy likes to charge people, right? Uh, so I haven't quite decided. So if you like the look of these and you might be interested in purchasing some of them, uh, please join my Facebook group, DAC Fans Canada. Again, you do not need to be Canadian to join. If you want to uh, de-stash any diamond paintings or accessories, uh, you must be willing to ship to Canada in order to post that. Otherwise, any other posts, you know, sharing tips, tricks, whips, anything, uh, anybody can post. So um, yeah. These are my Valentine's ones. So there's my sneak peek for my followers over here on YouTube. I hope you like them. I was having so much fun this morning making them. They just made my heart smile with all the pretty colors. And I can't wait to make more. I currently have more of the background piece, the wood piece that I paint, um, half painted and ready to go. Fingers crossed I'm not in a pain crisis tomorrow and I can make some more because I know a lot of you are really interested. I was very limited at the Christmas time drop just because my arms were not, I was not doing well, but I've had all sorts of procedures and injections and medications, so I should be good at least until Valentine's Day so I can get more of these out for you. 
But I hope you like these. I hope that the demo for um, making your pen tips fit was easy to follow. If you have any questions about that, just leave them in the comments down below. I do sit down every day, every one to three days. It used to be every morning, but it just depends how I'm feeling. Sometimes I will catch up uh, in a day or so later. So not to worry, any comments you make on my videos, I will get back to each and every one of you. So if you do have any questions on how I did that or anything, um, leave it in the comments down below. I'll also try to link an X-Acto knife like this from Amazon in case you need one or you want to try this. And yeah, let me know how you're doing as well. I always want to know how you guys are holding up. As I said earlier, we are snowed in here. Let me know if you guys are snowed in too and how much snow you've gotten. If you made it to the end of the video, how about leave me a little heart emoji for Valentine's Day and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up before you head out. That really helps the channel grow. And if you haven't already subscribed, I would love to have you here also over on my Facebook group. You can also click the notification bell to be notified when I do post videos. And until the next one, happy diamond painting, you guys. Bye.